Hi everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see how to construct a multi-range ammeter. In the previous lecture, we have seen a single range ammeter. How we have constructed the single range ammeter? We have taken a shunt resistor. We have taken a resistor across the meter. So if we have this type of construction, we have to say this is ammeter. Okay, here it is the voltage we are applying and this is the current, unknown current that is flowing and it is, it is ISH and it is the IM meter current along with the meter resistance RF <coughs> and this is RSH. This is okay, fine. But how many ranges this type of construction can measure? This type of construction can measure only single range. How to decide how we can say that this type of ammeter can measure single range because a range is determined by the shunt resistance RSH. If you are using one shunt resistance, that one shunt resistance will decide one range. If you are using two shunt resistors, that will give two different ranges because based on this shunt resistance RSH we are giving here, the amount of current that is flowing through the meter. Suppose if we change the shunt resistance, the amount of current flowing through the meter will also change. Because if ISH changes, IM will change. See here, I is equal to ISH plus IM. I is equal to ISH plus IM. If RSH changes, if RSH changes, either decrement or increment, this will change the current ISH. Either increment or decrement. If RSH decreases, then current flowing through the resistance will increase. If RSH will increase, then the current flowing through that resistance will decrease. So depending upon this uh, proportionate change in the RSH, ISH changes. As ISH changes, in order to balance this equation, obviously IM will change because I is constant here. I is equal to ISH plus IM. Okay. That means one resistance RSH is for one range. Okay. Now in this <coughs> video, we are going to see the multi-range ammeter. That means I want a single instrument that will be used for number of ranges like I1, I2 and so on different number of ranges like IM. Okay. See, the range of DC ammeter is extended by a number of shunts selected by a range switch. So, how we are inc increasing the number of uh, resistors? So, we are using number of resistors and each and every resistor must be selected by a switch. <coughs> the resistor is placed in parallel to give different current ranges i told you so different resistors will give different current ranges and switch s here the switch s is a selected switch is nothing but it is a multi position switch it will select different ranges it is a multi selection switch multi position switch that protects the meter movement from being damaged during the range changing <coughs> Now let us see how the construction of the multi-range ammeter is going to be done. So this is the way how to construct the multi-range ammeter. So this multi-range ammeter is also known as parallel multi-range ammeter. Parallel multi-range ammeter. See all the resistors are connected in parallel. In parallel means all these are like this. Okay, here we have selected four different ranges four different ranges that's why four different resistors how many resistors we are connecting that many ranges we can measure i1 i2 i3 i4 and so on so when switch is connected at, at this position let us take this as first position this as second position and it as third and this as fourth now let us see when switch is connected to first position what happens when switch is connected to first position when switch is connected to first position, how many resistors are there in the circuit? <coughs> oh 
only RSH1. What about RSH2, RSH3 and RSH4? They are simply eliminated from the circuit because they are open circuited. Because they are open circuited. And when switch is connected to position 2, what are the resistors existed in the circuit? Only RSH2. And remaining resistors like <coughs> RSH1, RSH3, RSH4 are eliminated from the circuit. And when switch is connected at the third position, RSH3 is there in the circuit and remaining resistors are gone out of the circuit. And when switch is connected at the fourth position, RSH4 is there in the circuit remaining or eliminated. So every time, every time when you are switch is selecting a particular position, it's simply acting like your normal simple DC range, DC ammeter, single range ammeter, isn't it? So if you observe the circuit diagram, when a switch is selected to a particular resistor, it's simply a resistor is there. <coughs> A resist is there in parallel with the meter. Okay, this is the way how to construct the multi-range ammeter. Why I am saying it is a parallel ammeter? We have another construction uh, where all the resistors are connected in series. That series connection comes in parallel with the meter. Okay. Now, coming to a problem. Problems are very, very important here in this concept. <clears throat> a 1 milliampere meter movement with an internal resistance of 100 ohms internal resistance is given <coughs> sorry internal resistance is given like 100 ohms and meter current is given i 1 milliampere it is to be converted into a multi range ammeter it is to be converted into multi range ammeter let us see one by one IM is given, what is IM? 1 milliampere. And RM is given, RM is equal to 100 ohms. And values are given here. See, four different values are given. 1, 2, 3. Sorry, three different values are given. That means three resistors should be calculated. I1 is equal to 10 milliamperes. I2 equal to 50 milliamperes and I3 equal to 100 milliamperes. Okay, now you are asked to find out the shunts required for these three. How many shunts we need to calculate? Three shunts RSH1, RSH2, RSH3. Okay, so what is the formula of RSH1? When switch is connected to first position, the circuit simply appears to be normal basic DC ammeter. So what is the formula of basic RSH? IM RM by I minus IM. We know this formula. We have seen this uh, calculation part in the previous lecture. So RSH is equal to IM RM by I minus IM. This is okay. But when you are calculating RSH1, it should be I, I1. Okay. That is only the change. Everything is common. When you are going to calculate RSH2, IM RM by I2 minus IM. Okay. If it is 2, 2, 3, 3, like that. Okay. So IM into RM. What is IM? 1 milli into RM. RM is equal to 100 divided by what is I1? 10 milli minus. 1 milli. So it is equal to 0 0.1 by 10 minus 1, 9 milli. 0 0.1 by 9 milli. So what is the value? It is simply 11.1 ohm. And RSH2 IM RM by I2 minus IM because when you are calculating the second resistance it is I2 okay so 
in the numerator it is same imrm so 1m 1 milli into 100 divided by i2 what is the value of i2 50 so 50 milli minus im 1 milli so it is equal to again 0 0.1 by 50 minus 1 49 milli so it is equal to 2.04 ohms and rs such 3 is equal to imrm divided by i3 minus im that is equal to 1 milli into 100 divided by i3 what is i3 100 milli minus 1 milli that is equal to 0 0.1 by it is 99 milli that is equal to 0 0.01 ohms okay so it is very 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 simple if you know the formula rsh is equal to im rm by i minus im if you are having any number of ranges like a four or five ranges that many resistors you have to calculate and you have to take the formula like this rsh1 i1 rsh2 i2 rsh3 i3 so after this formula you need to draw the circuit diagram very very important in the problems after the calculation part is over you have to draw the circuit diagram and show the values on this circuit diagram what you have got okay so this is the meter i told you already whenever you are taking a meter definitely you should mention imrm immediately This is the switch. Use it to select any of these ranges. So let us take this as range I1, I2, I3. And for I3, what is RSH3? 0 0.01 ohms. And this one, 2.04 ohms. And this one, 11.1 ohms. So here it is plus. And here it is minus this is the applied voltage okay so in this way you have to do the problems and you're asked to calculate a multi range ammeter everywhere you need to find out the unknown resistance values so resistance values you need to find out means you are going to design the ammeters or voltmeters in the voltmeter part also you are going to calculate the resistors only okay thank you